And that's going to bring up the man of the hour. Chambers hits us with deep to left field. Oh, Nurse gets in on high and deep. Center deep. Spot is back at the track. At the wall. Yeah, so so for me, um, when I left Seattle, I was really excited about it. And it wasn't anything to do with uh, the fans. It wasn't anything to do with my teammates. It wasn't anything to do with the city of Seattle. It was to do with sort of my situation. Um, and, and, I mean, if I could have spent my entire career as a Mariner, I would have, if the situation was right. Um, but... You know, things happen, and it was what it was, and I got traded. And I was obviously super excited to go to, to Toronto. And um, my two teams growing up when I was young was the Blue Jays and, and the Mariners. And the Blue Jays played every day, right? They're on their TV every day. When they actually had a day off, which is rare, the Mariners played, right? And then you got your Griffey, you got your Edgar, you got those guys. So you start falling in love, especially the West Coast, right? West Coast guys start falling in love with the Mariners and, and Blue Jays. And uh, anyways, so I got down to spring, uh, spring early. And, um, you know, I was, I was the front line guy for, for left field. And um, it, this was even – this was before pitchers and catchers reported. So this was really before spring training. It wasn't be, even before uh, uh, p- position players got there. It was before p- uh, catchers and pitchers got there. And right. – uh, so we're just hitting some BP and, and I was jogging across the field doing that sort of uh, fake hustle, you know, uh, there's like three or four of us in the outfield and, and we're just trying to throw the balls in and I'll never forget it, man. Like there's a ball hitting the left center gap. I was in left field and I kind of did that fake hustle jog to, to left center and my, my foot hit the sprinkler head and it popped. I heard my knee pop. And at that moment, I knew something was wrong, and my knee immediately started swelling up. Um, and to this day, like, I'll never forget that sound and, and the way my knee felt immediately afterwards. And I walked off the field, and <laughs> so I had – so one of my closest friends in baseball is Justin Smoke. And he came over as a free agent after I got traded over to, to Toronto. And I was walking off the field after my knee had clearly blown up. And there's balls all over the wall in left field, as in I was big league in it, right? Like I was <laughs> big league And I'm walking off, and I'm going behind the net where the guys are hitting, and all of a sudden I hear smoke from right field as a first baseman going, pick up the effing ball, Sondo, like this guy. They're like, get all over me. And I don't pay him any attention. Like I realize my knee is messed up, and I'm walking. And before I get into the training room, I'm still outside, and the assistant GM – that time, Tony LaCava, the assistant GM of the Blue Jays, comes up to me. He's like, hey, Michael, pleasure to meet you. I'm Tony. Oh, uh, no. We credit for you, this kind of thing. And I played it off brilliantly, too, man. <laughs> I was like, hey, pleasure to meet you, like this kind of thing. Like, oh, I'm so happy to be here, blah, blah, blah. And no big deal. And I get in there, and I lay down on the table, and I'm, like, almost in tears. And sweat's coming down, and all this kind of stuff. The trainers are, are taking care of me. And finally, he comes up to me the next day. He's like, dude, I've never – I never would have imagined that you had a blown out knee when I first met you, like this kind of thing. And um, so that was my experience going to the Blue Jays in 15. Um, obviously, ups and downs, and due to numerous reasons, I couldn't play. I tried to play. I played about a week or something like that. I had a bad bone bruise on my tip of the plateau, but, uh, you know, I had to call the, the season, um, I'd say, I don't know, late April, something like that, and uh, then focus on the next year. Right. So that, that focusing on the next year, that process, like, was that just pre- preparing your mind and preparing, like, uh, what, what does that look like? Yeah, more so mental than anything, for sure. Um, before then, I'd, you know, I'd gone through some injuries and stuff like that and been on the field, off the field, on the field, off the field. And it's almost like you had a, you, I had a tag personally of like injury prone, right? And, um, I was devastated more so than anything because I blew on my knee going to a new organization. I wanted to prove the Mariners wrong. 
mm. more so than anything because uh, they're like, oh, he's always injured. He's always injured. And I was like, F this. Like, I don't, you know, I can play this kind of thing. And when I did that, that was the biggest thing for me. So it became more of a mental hurdle. Um, so I went to see about three or four different doctors for my knee and no one knew what was really going on. Uh, and that was mentally devastating for me. And then when I finally saw the one specialist here in Colorado that told me about my situation and that I'd be fine and everything like this. And, um, you know, my season was basically over, but it's time to prepare for 16, you know, weight just was lifted off my shoulders and it, obviously it sucked, but I had answers at that point And I realized that it wasn't a career ending injury. I was going to be okay, but it's time to start focusing on the next year rather than trying to make it back for 15. And at that point, um, you know, mental clarity was really a big thing for me. So that 2016 season, you, I mean, that first half that you had was electric and how much of like, how much of that was like a chip on your shoulder? You wanted to go out there and you wanted to show like, I, I can play this game. Yeah, no, the biggest thing for me, I think it was like, I wanted to show, uh, the fans why they traded for me in the first place. Um, because it was a big deal, you know. They brought they brought Jay Happ yeah. over to Seattle, and you know he's gone on to do the things he's done. Not just gone on to do it, but he's done the things he did prior to the trade. Um, and uh, my biggest thing was after fifteen, again being injured. You know, the the word again was something that really resonated with me. But I really wanted to show why I was traded over there in the first yeah. place. And, um. Yeah, and just being home in Toronto, man, I felt I felt like I was home. This was my favorite team growing up. Um, you know, it's not just Toronto's team; it's Canada's team. And and being a Canadian, you know, I felt like wearing that Jays uniform brought a lot of pride. And and it, I, I'm not gonna say it meant more to me than others because I can't speak on their behalf, but it really resonated with me. And I took a lot of pride in wearing that uniform every day. So. Uh, what was the feeling when you were the last vote inductee to the Hall of, or to the uh, to the All Star Game? Oh, okay, I'm saying, yeah. I'll take it. I'll take it. <laughs> to the to the All Star Game and all of Canada, I voted for you. All of Canada yeah, kind of got online and started voting for you to vote for the Canadian to get into the All Star Game. Uh, I appreciate it. Yeah, no. It, again, it just goes to show that um, the support that your your country. It's not just your your the you know Toronto. It, it's it really is Canada's team, right? It's the yeah. Toronto Blue Jays, but it's the Canadian Blue Jays. Essentially, is how it feels. You know, that now that the Expos are gone, and um, it's a national, it's a it's a countrywide following, and and everyone pulls. And not only that, it's like I understand the the local ties, right? I understand the Canadian playing for the Blue Jays, and everyone pulls for that guy, and I pulled for that guy growing up, and. Um, it's something special. It really is. And, and whenever, if you haven't been to a Blue Jays game, I will forever call it the Sky Dome. I won't call it the Rogers Center. Anybody that grew up Canadian calls it the Sky Dome, right? Um, when, when, whether it's home or away, when that person comes on the screen and they post the, you know, where he's from, all this kind of stuff, uh, his statistics, blah, blah, blah. There's always, if you're Canadian, there's a little maple leaf right in the corner. Yeah. So it's, allows everyone to to recognize the fact that this guy's canadian and he's done something special because yeah baseball is not the biggest sport in canada but it doesn't mean we can't play with the best in the world we can uh and i think everyone whether you're on the team or not everyone holds that little special thing in their heart where they start cheering for that guy yeah. um and i saw that when um you know the that vote came on and and uh um you know, I know that that everyone pulled for me and, and essentially made it a landslide is what it was. And yeah. um, I would never be in the All-Star game today if it wasn't for Canada. So hey, your, number, your numbers and that's, earned that's, it. That's, you know, that's – what is that? We're going on 20 now, so that's four or five years ago. You know, I'll, I'll never forget it. Your, your numbers backed it up. You had a real good first half. That first half you had, you know, you're hitting around 300. 15, 16 bombs, you had a good OPS. I was looking at earlier today, but I was going to say, I think what you're saying is backed up quite a lot by, you know, the Blue Jays led the AL in attendance that year. And 
hundred percent. It's hard to yeah. do when you're playing in the same division as the New York Yankees. Yeah. I mean, Toronto's the forgotten sort of AL East team. Yeah. But we're the most they, I mean, I say we are. I'm not a part of the organization anymore, but I feel like I am a little bit, I guess, due to those those two years, 15 and 16. Yeah. Um, but they're arguably the most dangerous, yeah. you know? And for that reason is because you start winning, those fans start coming out. Yeah. I'll never forget it. Like, there was a there was a feeling in that, it, again, the Rogers, you know, the Sky Dome. I'm not going to call it the Rogers Center. The Sky <laughs> Dome, where it's like, Stuff started shaking when yeah. you were playing. You could and, see the cameras and, shaking. And the, the, vid- the visiting, uh, the visiting teams felt it, man. Mm. <clears throat> they felt it, and and that's what makes it. They they might have not been the greatest teams ever. I mean, we were pretty talented, obviously, but our there was no such thing as home advantage compared to you know that that fifteen to sixteen team for sure. Yeah, I mean, you watch those. You watch that wild card game. And I think it's like, it's so evident how crazy that building can get. Like when Edwin hit that home run, the cameras were literally pulsing. Yeah. And like the, the yeah. sound, you could barely hear the foghorn. Yeah. How loud it was. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's crazy, man. Those yeah. fans were just like live and die by the Blue Jays. Yeah. And obviously, you know, it helped with the Maple Leafs. I don't know if you're a Leafs fan, but. I'm a big Canucks fan myself. <laughs> Oilers. It helps, it helps that the Maple Leafs weren't playing too well, so they were just desperate for something. But <laughs> uh, yeah, man, I I wanted to ask you about that home run, and I wanted to ask you kind of like that game in general. Uh, you know, and you know what? If it wasn't Edwin hitting off Ubaldo, I think you might have, because you had the most home runs in your career off of Ubaldo Jimenez for whatever reason. Um, <laughs> yeah. But like that game, as a as a fan, like like you said, like I you know, I was a Mariners fan, and I was you have to be a Blue Jays fan because you watch it all the time. You know, I was watching. I've been to a couple games uh, in Toronto, going to like things like the Mizuno camp and stuff like that before it became T twelve, and I watched Jose Bautista when he was hitting, you know, fifty home runs a year in those like two thousand twelve years, and it's hard. And I used to love Aaron Hill. And John McDonald, those were like those two names. I love John. I can. I used to practice his backhand you must, slide. You must have loved when John McDonald went deep. Oh yeah, on, on of course. Day. Yeah, that's a yeah. story. You can't write that. Oh and um, about the atmosphere at in Toronto that game, you know, in the wild card against uh, Baltimore. Yeah, I mean, obviously crazy, and so. I hate to say this because I don't mean anything negative by the guy, but as soon as they didn't bring in Britain, yeah, we knew the game was over. What well, it was like a morale thing when they brought in Ubaldo, and and the numbers showed. Honestly, the numbers would show that Ubaldo dominated our lineup. Mm. Um, but when again, when when we saw Britain warming up. And I know that they were on the road. And Buck, I mean, you can never argue with the guy as far as a manager, right? Yeah. It's one of the more decorated managers of all time. You know, the the, the typical, I'm going to bring my closer in on the road if we have a lead. I'm going to bring my closer in at home if it's a tie game or whatever. I We get it. As soon as they brought in Ubaldo, it's like everybody on the bench kind of looked at each other and said, this game's over. This game's over. Not bringing, and that's when Britain was Zach Britton. He too. was the really, really That's when he was a sub one. Yeah. The clo- like the guy. So I think maybe seeing him and then not bringing him in gave us a morale boost. When they brought in Ubaldo, we kind of looked at each other. We said, this game's over. Yeah. Yeah. That uh, obviously, obviously the fans yeah. went absolutely nuts. And rightfully so. When, when, when Edwin hit that homer, and I mean, we went nuts, obviously, and they, we just knew, we just knew when Ubaldo was coming in, running in from the bullpen before the inning even started, we said this game's over. Yeah, I don't understand how. Like, what do you prefer, the bat flip or Edwin's walk off? I think they're both notorious in their own right. To right. be honest with you, I think they both hold. Um, a rightful place in Blue Jays history. Um, talking to bats, it's like guys that don't play with him and 
and don't necessarily know him or understand him, don't understand the situation. He's like, dude, I have almost 400 homers in my career. He goes, that's the biggest homer in my, my life. Like I was a little kid. Hmm. Like no one understands that I was a little kid in that situation. I don't know what happened. I flipped the bat. I said, <laughs> um, and you, you're like, dude, nobody in their right mind would not trade places with him in that second. So, yeah. you know, for the, for all the Canadian fans, we love it, right? For but for the people that disagree with it, don't understand what he was going through. It's just raw and emotion. Exactly. It that's the best way to put it. It's raw emotion. You don't. He goes. I don't even know what to do with myself. I I just threw the bat up. I was so yeah. excited. You can kind of tell too, right? <laughs> and rightfully like, so. And it, and I had gone on to play with numerous different organizations after sixteen, um, and. Every, that was the number one question. It's like, hey, what do you got on Jose Batista? I go, dude, one of the best teammates I've ever had. Yeah. And I'm not just saying this. Like, le- legitimately, one of the best teammates I've ever had. Um, we still stay in contact today. And, and we're texting, you know, a couple times a month. Like, the guy is phenomenal. And he said, I was a kid in the candy store. Hmm. He's, he's hit 400 homers. But that one, and then all of a sudden, that's what he did. Yeah. It's like, the guy hits 50 a year, and he's – you know, never really done it, but in that situation, they finally get to the playoffs. Can't blame the guy. No, absolutely not. No. And then you got Edwin. This guy doesn't say anything. This guy is tight lipped, you know, and when he does say he's he's like the father of the clubhouse is when he finally <laughs> says something, everyone stops their stuff and just like looks and okay, yes sir, no sir, this kind of thing. And he he's the I mean, he is the main leader of the clubhouse, to be honest with you. And when he did that, it's like you're not going to see more emotion out of him when than when he raised his arms, you yeah, know? Yeah. And so there's and, – and both – it's not just like the situation, but those both those players are so iconic Yeah. in Blue Jays history. Yeah. There's Joe Carter. You know, you have your Tony Fernandez and, and the Roy Hallidays and, and Dave Steves and, and that kind of thing. But – more recently, for your era, for my era, it's it's Jose we, Bautista. We remember and the bat flip, yeah, and then we remember when Edwin hit that. Was it? It might have been Grand Slam. Was it, it Grand was Slam? A, it was a three run, three run, off Ubaldo, and yeah. he puts up his hands, and it just it's like falls. those are the situations. Yeah. Even though we never won the World Series, it's like those are the situations that we uh, that we remember. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I, I think it. I think it's completely iconic in Canadian baseball. You know, one hundred percent. 